Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Kev's Defender Project. Now today we're going to be replacing the rear axle on the vehicle and we're doing this for two reasons. Firstly, the standard axle just has drum brakes on the back um, and they're quite an old technology so replacing it with a new discovery axle uh, which has disc brakes on the back and secondly the disco axle has brackets for an anti-roll bar and with the suspension the way it is the vehicle tends to kind of roll really far when you go around corners at speed so an anti-roll bar should fix that it's a future project but at least we're going to be putting the brackets in for that now before we start a little bit of a disclaimer I'm not a professional mechanic, I'm not a trained mechanic, I just do this for fun as a hobby, so don't copy what I'm doing. Um, make sure you take professional help if you're going to attempt this, especially considering we're going to have the vehicle up on axle stands while we're potentially being underneath as well. So you've got to be really careful, don't copy what I'm doing, take professional advice, don't try this at home. Having said that, let's go and get started. Since we're going to have the vehicle up on axle stands, the first job is to block the front wheels to stop any movement. Now, before we jack up the rear end and put it on the axle stands, there's a few things we want to disconnect first. Firstly, we want to disconnect the prop shaft. Next, we're going to loosen the bolts on the lower links because that's a lot easier to do when it's on the ground rather than when it's on axle stands. We're also going to loosen the nut holding on the upper ball joint. And we're going to loosen the bolts on the shock absorbers. Disconnect the brake hoses. Once the brake hoses are disconnected, it's a good idea to cover the ends. This is going to stop dirt and water getting into the brake line. I've just used some money bags here and some gaffer tape. Then we're going to take the cap off the brake reservoir. We're going to put some plastic over the top and put the top back on. Now that should create kind of not really a vacuum, but it should stop any air getting in at that end. So when we disconnect the brake hoses at this end, we should get a lot less leak. And lastly, we're going to loosen up the wheel nuts before we jack it up so we can get the wheels off more easily. So I've sped this up a bit, but basically for each side of the vehicle, we're going to jack it up so that we've got enough space to get an axle stand underneath the chassis rail. We'll then take the wheel off and then lower the jack down again. So this is just the first side. We're going to do the same again for the other side which will give us space to take the actual rear axle fully off. Right, so now we've got the chassis up on axle stands, we've got the wheels off and we've checked that the axle comes down fine. We'll jack that back up to take all the weight. We'll disconnect the lower arms, we'll disconnect the upper link. I've made sure everything else is disconnected. Then we can lower it down on the jack and take it away. So at this point I discovered that I wasn't going to be able to get the ball joint to separate so what I did was remove the entire fulcrum bracket and then once the axle was off the vehicle that's when I could separate the ball joint. Same thing, yes, that axle removal was, shall we say, suboptimal. Um, I should have had at least one, probably two assistants, but in my defense, the axle that I took off is just going for scrap. So I figured I'd save up my favors for people helping me until I really needed them to get a new one on. 
because I don't want to get that all bashed up. So, while we've been while I've been waiting for some help to become available, I've done some shopping. So let's have a quick look at what I bought. So first of all, I have replaced the Fulcrum bracket and the ball joint because as you can see from this old one this ball joint is pretty shot so I've got a nice shiny new one and that will just bolt on back in the same place I've also got a new set of poly bushes for everything uh, thanks to the guys at MPB 4x4 who were the guys who built my axle thanks for them for sorting me out with the bushing kit now this is the old bushing um, it's pretty tired and it's starting to crack in places but this is the new one so it's a nice new poly bush that's going to go on at the front of the trailing arm and then we can get the back on so what I've done with the trailing arms themselves is cleaned all the rust off I've painted them and I've also fitted a new set of the poly bushes to the end of the trailing arm as well now you're probably going to need a press to put these in if you do get these um, you could I don't know whether you could actually um, do it without a press but um, I've got a 12 ton press so I put them in and um, that was fairly straightforward so this is the axle that MPB 4x4 built for me they got a an old discovery axle off of disco they were breaking and they fitted new calipers new discs new pads they've uh, replaced all the bushings and seals and I've then fitted the new brake lines um, and they were kind enough to Raptor paint it for me. So Raptor is a two part paint that when it sets, sets very hard and they were kind enough to paint it up for me at no extra cost. So I can highly recommend these guys if you're looking for any parts for um, a job like this. So I've got my help coming pretty soon. Uh, he's on his way here now, so while I'm waiting I'm going to go and bolt those new parts on in readiness. Uh, so the next thing you'll see is us trying to get the axle back on. So here you can see we're having a little bit of an issue trying to get the trailing arms back into their brackets. Now we eventually figured out that this is because uh, because of the Raptor paint that we had the axle painted in um, gives an extra little bit of thickness which means that stuff doesn't fit together properly so you might just want to be aware of that if you're doing this job at home. So at this point all we've got left to do is just compress the shock absorbers so we can get them back into the brackets on the axle. Connect them back up again with the outer bush and the washer and the nut. Hook the prop shaft back up again. And finally connect the brake hoses from the calipers to the brake lines on the axle. And there you have it. All we've got left to do now is bleed the brakes and put the wheels back on and we're done. So I'm not going to run you through that. If you want to see a video on how to bleed the brakes, then uh, leave me some comments and I'll do one in the future. But other than that, um, thank you for watching. Uh, join me again soon on another video when we'll be doing something else fun to the vehicle. And um, bye for now.